Let's talk about how we can use nutrition to kill cancer. Our diets can play a significant role in cancer, both for the good and the bad. And today we're going to talk about how to optimize your nutrition to fight against cancer cells. There's several different areas we're going to focus in on today. And the first is what types of foods to avoid. There are unfortunately a lot of foods that are in our normal diet that can promote the growth of cancer and cause damage inside our bodies. Now, towards the end of the video, we're going to get into specific foods that have anti-cancer properties. But keep in mind that those foods will only go so far if we're not going to take out the things that are damaging and contributing to the risk of getting cancer. The biggest risk factor over decades and decades has been smoking. I know this technically isn't a food and probably not worth mentioning because it's so well known, but smoking is the biggest modifiable risk factor for cancer. 80 to 90% of deaths from lung cancer and 30 to 40% of cancer overall is linked with smoking. Next, we have to think strongly about reducing alcohol intake. Alcohol has unfortunately been linked to increased risk for multiple types of cancer, including head and neck, pancreatic, stomach, colon, rectal, prostate cancers, and more. This is gonna go for any type of alcohol, including wine, beer, liquor, all alcohol is going to increase risk for cancer in the higher the dose, probably the more significant the effect. Those are pretty straightforward. Next, we want to look into the idea of lowering our blood sugar and insulin levels. Research has very clearly shown that individuals with diabetes and obesity are at very high risk for developing cancer. The primary factor behind this increased risk is insulin sensitivity, high levels of insulin and resistance in the body towards that insulin. Now, what is it that causes insulin levels to spike? There are two main factors. The first is going to be meals that are heavy in carbohydrates, especially refined processed carbohydrates and added sugar. Eating these processed foods, these unhealthy foods, will cause high spikes in insulin over and over and over again. And over time, the body starts developing resistance to that insulin. The second major factor is frequent meals throughout the day. Imagine if I were to eat all throughout the day, I'm constantly providing my body a source of energy and causing insulin levels to increase. How can we counteract this? Well, first, it can be really helpful to cut out added sugars and processed refined carbohydrates from the diet. Instead of eating refined carbohydrates like breads and pastas and bakery products, sweets and things with added sugar in it, look for healthier sources of carbohydrates and sugars like fruit. Fruit is often going to contain things like fiber, which can help prevent spikes in blood sugar and insulin. In addition to cleaning up the amount of processed foods we're eating, it can also be extremely helpful to practice fasting on a regular basis. I really, really, really want to drive this point home because it's perhaps the most powerful tool we have for both preventing and treating cancer. First of all, fasting can lower blood sugar levels, which is going to lower insulin and improve our overall insulin sensitivity. Ultimately, there are a bunch of pathways and chemicals that get triggered when we enter the fasting state. The end result of all these pathways that get triggered basically result in anti-tumor effects. Fasting has been shown to promote a lot of pathways that restore the body, such as the sirtuin genes and autophagy. Autophagy is a process that our immune system goes through when it cleans up and even kills dysfunctional cells. Intermittent fasting or eating within a four to eight hour time window every day can start to make benefit of these pathways. Prolonged fasting, especially when you hit the 48 to 72 hour range, is when a lot of these benefits really start to come into effect. And my current regimen is doing a 72 hour water only fast once every three months. And I'd eventually like to work up to once a month if I can. Moral of the story, intermittent fasting, prolonged fasting are a very powerful tool that we can take advantage of to fight against cancer.
If you're learning anything from this video, take a quick moment to subscribe so you can learn more about living a happier and healthier life. Now, the last foods to consider cutting out are trans-saturated fats and seed oils. Trans-saturated fats are fried foods, margarine, partially hydrogenated seed oils. These are incredibly damaging to our body. They have no known health benefits, and there's no safe level of consumption. You can check for trans-saturated fats by looking on food labels at the section that says trans fats or by looking at the ingredients list and seeing if there's anything that says partially hydrogenated oils. I also mentioned seed oils and there's a lot of debate about the contribution of seed oils to cancer. We do know that seed oils, which are processed oils such as canola oil, sunflower oil, rapeseed oil, have high amounts of linoleic acid. Our body needs small amounts of linoleic acid. It's an omega-6 fatty acid. However, if we consume too much of it, there is some research that links certain negative health benefits to the body, including an increased risk in cancer. There are a lot of people who feel very strongly about the negative health effects of seed oils, and these are in a lot of foods. They're in vegetable meats, you know, fake meats. They're in a lot of processed snacks, uh, even breads. These are in a lot of our processed food products, which is why people get concerned. There is no clear research, at least that I'm aware of, that directly links seed oils to the development of cancer. And so a lot of people are on the other side of the debate and say that it's nothing to worry about. My thought is this. I think there is an overwhelming amount of benefit from cutting out processed foods and eating whole, natural, unprocessed foods. I encourage people to cut seed oils out of their diet as much as they can, replacing it with healthier options like olive oil, avocado oil, or coconut oil. Let's get into the final section of this video, which is particular foods that have anti-cancer properties. These foods can help reduce inflammation, reduce oxidative stress. Some of them even have direct action against cancer cells and can promote the death of cancer cells. Cruciferous vegetables such as broccoli, cauliflower, and kale are perhaps the most renowned for their anti-cancer properties. With broccoli specifically, there's a high amount of a phytochemical called sulforaphane, which is a cancer-fighting plant compound that's been linked to the reduction of multiple types of cancer. Berries have powerful antioxidant and anti-inflammatory compounds that also have anti-cancer properties. Mushrooms can be very potent against cancer cells and have been shown to reduce risks of multiple types of cancer. They may even directly kill cancer cells. Tomatoes contain a compound called lycopene, which has been shown to reduce risk of cancer. Green tea, this is rich in compounds, including one called EGCG which has some anti-cancer benefits. Garlic, ginger, and onions all have compounds such as allicin and quercetin that can inhibit tumor growth and cause apoptosis of cancer cells. Walnuts are another great option. They're rich in omega-3 fatty acids, antioxidants, and fiber, all of which can play a very helpful role in preventing cancer. Flax seeds have a lot of similar compounds, and contain these specific ones called lignans, which can help with hormone-related cancers like breast and prostate cancer. Finally, green leafy herbs such as parsley, cilantro, and basil have helpful anti-cancer benefits. So cut out the bad stuff, add in the good stuff, and regularly practice fasting to significantly reduce your chances of getting cancer. Let us know if there's any other foods that you use for its anti-cancer properties. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe if you want to learn more about living a happier and healthier life. <music>